Okay. So in this video, we'll be talking about COPD exacerbation. We'll discuss that what is COPD exacerbation? How do you manage COPD exacerbation in emergency department? And what is the concept of ceiling of care? What is COPD exacerbation? COPD exacerbation is the increase in the symptoms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease beyond the normal day-to-day -day variation. Remember that chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a chronic disease that is present all the time. That baseline disease is present. But sometimes that symptoms increase rapidly and those symptoms are severe. These symptoms get severe. That is called as COPD exacerbation. It is a common medical emergency and it is most commonly present in winters where the respiratory infection rate is high. And that infection causes COPD exacerbation. The presentation is that these patients will be developing increasing cough. These are mostly the patients who have emphysema and they develop increasing cough. They are breathless and they have wheezy chest and they have reduced exercise capacity. When you are taking history, you need to ask about the usual and recent treatment that these patients are receiving. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a chronic disease due to lung damage. And these damaged lungs cannot main oxygen, maintain oxygen saturation. So these patients are mostly put on home oxygen therapy. You need to ask about home oxygen therapy. You need to ask about smoking status that whether they are currently smoking right now or not. Since COPD is uh, majorly caused by smoking, you need to ask that whether smoking can be a cause of exacerbation. You need to ask about their exercise capacity, that how much they can walk, how much exercise they can perform. This will help you assess the severity of COPD. Whenever a patient with COPD presents to you in emergency department, you need to start the patient on bronchodilator. You have to nebulize the patient. You start the patient on salbutamol and ipratropium combination. And uh, ipratropium is an anticholinergic drug. It causes bronchodilation and beta-2 agonist salbutamol also causes bronchodilation. Other than that, you need to investigate the cause of COPD exacerbation. You need to do chest x-ray to look for infection, which is one of the most common cause in winters that this patient presents with a COPD exacerbation. Other than that, you need to do ABGs. You want to see bicarb level. You want to see CO2 retention. You want to see oxygen sats. So you need to look for the metabolic profile. And when you receive the ABG, you have to give controlled oxygen therapy. If the oxygen saturation is less than 88%, what is controlled oxygen therapy? I'll discuss about controlled oxygen therapy and its mechanism in COPD in a while. And you adjust the oxygen therapy according to the ABG report that you get. And then you have to put the patient on steroids. You have to give IV hydrocortisone 200 mg. And when you are sending the patient home, after that, you have to put the patient on oral prednisolone 30 mg once daily for seven to 14 days at least, and you taper down the dose and you stop it ultimately. So steroids are a very important component for the treatment of COPD exacerbation. Other than that, if there is an evidence of infection, as I said, that infection is one of the most common precipitating factor for COPD exacerbation. If there is any evidence of active infection, you need to start antibiotic therapy. In antibiotic therapy, you can go for amoxicillin, clarithromycin, doxycycline, these drugs can be used to treat the infection. So nebulize bronchodilators, salbutamol, epratropium bromide, send investigations, give controlled oxygen therapy, give steroids, and give antibiotics if needed. And then you have to start physiotherapy to aid sputum expectoration. Physiotherapy is very helpful in removal of these secretions since these patients will be developing excessive secretion and those excessive secretions will be blocking the airways you need to do physiotherapy. Physiotherapy involves tapping of the patient's back and encouraging uh, removal of sputum and sputum expectoration will clear the airways. If there is no response to nebulizers and steroids, consider IV aminophylline. Aminophylline is basically a compo theophylline compound and that theophylline compound causes smooth muscle relaxation and bronchodilation and is a very important in the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease exacerbation. And it is only used if, it, if the patient is not responding to nebulizers and steroids. And still, if the patient is not responding, how would you know that the patient is not responding? If the respiratory rate is greater than 30, 
और द पी एच इज लेस देन सेवन पॉइंट थ्री फाइव द पी एच इज एसिडोटिक और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज राइजिंग पी एस सीओ टू इज राइजिंग देन वट यू नीड टू डू इज दैट यू हैव टू कंसिडर नॉन इनवेजिव पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन इन नॉन इनवेजिव पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन वट यू डू इज दैट यू पुट द पेशेंट ऑन अ वेंटिलेटर on ventilator what you do is that you aid the breaths of this patient and you let the patient expire all the co2 that is retaining inside and you help the breaths so uh, if the, if the ventilator is not available if the non invasive positive pressure ventilation is not available only then you should consider a respiratory stimulant drug or doxapram but it is a short term measure like non invasive positive pressure ventilation is the ultimate measure that you have to go for for the short term in the if the ventilator is being arranged in that time you can go for a respiratory stimulant that can help the patient so now we'll discuss oxygen therapy as i said that in in cobd patients we give controlled oxygen if the Uh, a saturation of oxygen is less than 88 we give controlled oxygen therapy and that oxygen therapy is to maintain the saturation between 88 to 92 why is it so that we are not trying to bring the saturation up to 97 98 like we do in normal individuals because always remember that in healthy individuals co2 retention and carbon dioxide drives the respiratory center whenever co2 retention is there it causes brain respiratory center to stimulate breathing and to wash out carbon dioxide in in copd patients they always have a chronic co2 retention so their respiratory centers get resistant to excess co2 and co2 does not drive respiratory center in copd patients in normal individuals carbon dioxide drives the respiratory center in copd patient carbon dioxide does not drive the respiratory center so what drives the respiratory center in copd patients it's the hypoxia that drives the respiratory center in copd patient so if you give 100% oxygen to this patient there will be no hypoxia and if there is no hypoxia respiratory center will just shut down because if there is hypoxia there is stimulation of the respiratory centers if there is no hypoxia there will be no stimulation of the respiratory center and the respiratory system will shut down and that patient will develop respiratory arrest so remember that you have to maintain a certain level of hypoxia in these patients you have to give oxygen saturation you have to give oxygen so to maintain the saturation between 82 and 92 you do not give oxygen more than that so that there is certain level of hypoxia that stimulates the central nervous system but remember that these copd patients are usually having very low oxygen because they are not able to breathe properly so you have to give oxygen to prevent hypoxia but you give oxygen to a saturation that there is a mild level of hypoxia that drives the central nervous system copd patients rely on the hypoxic drive to breathe so do not give too much oxygen because too much oxygen can shut down the respiratory drive other than that you repeat our arterial blood gases and monitor the patients other than that you need to consider sealing of care for these patients like to what extent do you have to go what's in the best interest of the patient try to discuss these things before that patient gets so severe that they are not able to convey their message to you discuss these things with them that whether they want to go on to a ventilator or not mostly the patients who have gone through ventilator experience once they do not prefer ventilator experience other than that invasive ventilation in copd patient may not be appropriate in some cases it may be even difficult for the patients to wean off from the ventilator other than that there are associated risks with the ventilator like ventilator associated pneumonia so it's always patient specific and it's also the autonomy of patient Uh, who decides that whether he wants to go for ventilator if gets if the condition gets severe or not so that's the ceiling of care that you need to consider in a copd exacerbation patient in summary we talked about treatment of copd exacerbation with nebulized bronchodilators controlled oxygen therapy if the oxygen saturation is less than 82 and giving oxygen between 82 to 92% saturation giving steroids antibiotics if there is evidence of infection physiotherapy and if uh, there is no response then iv aminophylline and non invasive positive pressure ventilation 
if the patient is not responding. Oxygen therapy, COPD patients rely on hypoxic drive to breathe. So do not give too much oxygen that shut down the respiratory drive and do not give too less that they develop hypoxia and death. Consider ceiling of care, what, decide what's in the best interest of the patient. Invasive ventilation might not be helpful in each and every patient. There are also risks associated with it. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.